The education bestowed on Flora Post by her parents had been expensive, athletic, and prolonged. And when they died during the annual epidemic of the Spanish plague, which occurred in her 20th year, she was discovered to possess every art and grace, save that of earning her own living. The death of her parents caused Flora little grief, for she'd barely known them. After the funeral, she returned to the house of her friend, Mrs. Smiling, at number one, Mouse Place, Lambeth. Was the funeral awful? Horrid. Ugh. Though I'm bound to say all my older relatives seem to enjoy it no end. Ah, did any of them ask you to go and live with them? I meant to warn you about that. Relatives are always wanting you to go and live with them. No. Well, remember, Mary, I've only a hundred pounds a year now, and I can't play bridge. Bridge? Mm, what curious ways people have of passing their time, to be sure. Now, Flora, you mustn't be feeble. You must take up some kind of work and then earn enough money to have a little flat of your own. What kind of work? Well, organising work, like I used to do. Before my marriage, I was an organiser for the LCC. Well, what did you do exactly, Mary? Oh, bookkeeping, beekeeping. Oh, don't ask me. It's so long since I've done any, I've forgotten. But it was organising. I'm sure you could manage it. You know, Flora, you'll be perfectly miserable if you don't have a job. Besides, a hundred pounds a year isn't even going to keep you in stockings and fans. What will you live on? My relatives. Oh, Flora, don't be ridiculous. Yes, Mary. I'm only 19, but I've already observed that whereas there still lingers some absurd prejudice against living on one's friends, no limits are set to the amount one may impose on one's relatives. Flora, you're insane. Mm. That's what relatives are for, surely. Darling, did you get the brassier? <sighs> no, I already had it in my collection. Oh. It was just a variation on the weaver design. There were three elastic sections in front instead of two, as I had hoped. Well, would that have made it more rare? Oh, naturally, Flora. Two-section brassiers are extremely rare. I shall write to all my relatives, asking them if they're willing to give me a home in exchange for my beautiful eyes and my hundred pounds a year. Well, Flora, I think that's perfectly immoral. When I found one relative was willing to have me, I shall take him or her in hand, alter his or her character and mode of living to suit my own taste. Thanks, you Hawk. Are, you are mad. But I'm all for civilising people. Do you think a circular letter would be a good idea? It was while she was pondering over the style best suited to the relatives in Sussex that she was struck by the singularity of their address. <laughs> Dawn crept over the downs like a sinister white beast, followed by the snarling cries of a wind eating its way between the black boughs of the thorns. <laughs> the wind was the furious voice of this sluggish animal light that was bearing the dormers and mullions and scullions of cold comfort farm. Claims her right. She'd come live with us. Robert Post's child? Husband mine, thy misdeeds have come home to roost. Amos, thou once did her father a great wrong. <laughs> a seed and a flower, the flower to the brood. The brutes in the belly, and so it mun go. Oh, silence! She mun come. She mun come to claim her right. The day of reckoning had to come. You must atone. But mother must be told. Mrs. Beetle, don't pick no, on me. come with me. I need your strength. I cannot do it alone. Don't you fret yourself, Mrs. I'll stand by you. Come what may. Thank you, Mrs. Beetle. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. 
Galatians 6, verse 7. Well, there's sowing and reaping, a plenty for all to do, huh? With a godless habit, this lazing around and gluttonizing <laughs> the working day. <laughs> I said, my son, <laughs> oh, you can, you can hide things from me, but you can't hide them from the Lord. Oh, no. He has his reeking pits all stoked up with fiery eternity and just waiting. Waiting for them that breaks the seventh commandment. Aye, and for them that waits in dead men's shoes. <laughs> Aunt Ada Doom. Core. Matrix. The focusing point of this cursed house. All the wandering waves of desire, passion, jealousy, lust that throbbed through the farm walls converged web-like upon her core solitude. Sixty-nine years ago, and me no bigger than a titty wren, I saw something nasty in the woodshed. Let's see what Aunt Gwen in Worthing has to say. Well, I think it's perfectly degrading of you, Flora. Do you truly mean to say that you never intend to work at anything? Well, when I'm 53 or so, I should like to write a novel as good as Jane Austen's Persuasion. You have a cinnamon wafer, darling. Oh, I adore them. For the next 30 years, I shall be collecting material for it. No one can object to that. But I, though I shall be. We'll have a real homey atmosphere. Plenty of fun. Perhaps you'll not mind giving a hand with the dogs. Oh, how kind. Who's that from? Which? Uncle McNagg in Perthshire. Dear Flora, shocked at your distressing news, delighted for you to shelter under my roof for as long as you care to fold the white wings of your girlhood here. Oh, how <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Interesting bird life can be observed in the marshes which surround the house mm, on three no sides. No bedroom. Hmm? My mother's cousin in South Kensington oh. offers me her attic. She also keeps the parrot up there. Oh, do open the howling one, the one from Cold Comfort. I think if I find I have any cousins at Cold Comfort Farm called Seth or Reuben, I shall decide not to go. Because highly sexed young men living on farms are always called Seth or Reuben. It's such a nuisance. <laughs> and my cousin's name, remember, is Judith. Dear niece, so you are after your rights at last. Right. Child, my man once did your father a great wrong. Never ask me what my lips are sealed. There have always been stark adders at cold comfort. <laughs> and we will do our best to welcome <laughs> Robert Post's child. <laughs> Yours affectionately, Jay Starkadder. <laughs> Sounds absolutely appalling. Quite. But interesting. Yes, it does sound interesting and appalling. The others just sound appalling. <laughs> 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 oh, Charles, that was a wonderful evening. It was a pleasure. That was to celebrate the inauguration of your career as a parasite. <laughs> All the same, I do think you might have stayed with us. I do happen to be your cousin. Oh, good heavens, I was dangling for invitation. You didn't think I was? <laughs> no, of course not, Flora. All the same, I've written to Mother and my sister, and we'd all be delighted to have you down in Hertfordshire. Oh, Charles. There's a swing in the garden, and tobacco flowers in the summer. Charles, it's really very kind of you all. I do thank your mother and cousin Heaven, but I've already decided exactly where I'm going to live. I shall be going there on Tuesday after lunch. Oh. Well, Flora, if you get sick of it, you will phone me, won't you? And I'll come and rescue you in my plane. On a plane, Charles? Uh -huh. I don't think a parson should have a plane. Ah, the old C of E is not what it was. What kind of plane is it? A police your bat, and its name is Speed Cop the Second. <laughs> anyway, you let me know when things get too much for you, and I'll come along. Where is it? Cold Comfort Farm. Cold Comfort Farm? How many? Sussex. Oh, 
of my when I ended my cold face, her plaintive voice did try. You marry me, oh yeah. You must go home to beers all tonight and meet the train. I couldn't match that to that still me. I remember what happened last time when he went to meet the new kitchen maid. I'll go, Miss Judith. We'll go. She asked me if I'd marry her and be her husband true. He... Robert Coe's child? Back to cold comfort. Ah, tis strange. Ah, so oh, hark how he frolics amongst the dun leaves. Let her live puffing life into dry twigs. Shut the door. Dear, dear brother Will. Shut that door. Hey! There are no shocks to us. To my little Elfine. My little mummies. There. Come, come to old Adam. Come help old Adam with the clattering. She hates us more than she helps. Yeah. There I am. Where's the I'm a dairy man, not a clatterer. A dairy man, do you hear me? You're the finest dairyman in the country. No one can draw milk like you, Adam. <laughs> not for life long these fingers. Tender the others. I'm not these hands drawn the calf from the belly of the cow. <laughs> me, a clatterer. Miriam! <laughs> And thou were but a tiny babe. A cross were put upon my feeding bottle. Adam, speak not of that. Tis too. true. Uh, in what of old's blood it were. Why? Why? Ask her. Oh, thy tongue. Uh, uh, Tis time she knew it. Solemn promises were made to her unfair that's enough. Shame on this family. Oh, ma'am. It's time to prepare for our guest. Oh, pardon, with a clattering. Yes, ma'am. Oh! 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 Shame on me, Charles! Libertine! Is Molly at the mill or Vera at the vicarage enough for you? Or Ivy perhaps at the ironmongery, but you must give our hard girl her fault. Oh, uh, bedays me, work devilish on me, as a woman does. Seth, my son, do you want to break my heart? Yeah. Alan! Alan! Alan Jackson! Alan! Oh, 
Oh, I'm glad to see you. How nice of you to come out in all this cold. Terribly good of you to have me, too. Isn't it curious that we've never met before? The seconds passed. Flora wondered if her lipstick were the wrong shade. Then decided Columbus must have received a similar solemn, unwavering gaze when he met his first poor Indian. Never before had a Starkadder looked upon a civilized being. I'm awfully tired, you know. I wonder, could I have a morsel of food in my own room, and then I could... It's cold in there. Oh, a fire will soon warm it up. Oh, it's too well, nice to I do think... perhaps it. smokes. I think it more than probable. Uh, shall we go in now? Oh, my trunk will be coming up by carrier's van tomorrow. My sons are waiting to see their cousin. Oh, I say that is Sir? nice of them, but if I... Reuben! Wonder, would you think it terribly rude of me if I didn't meet the rest of the family tonight? Follow me. Sick or something? Well, you could call it sick, I. When she were a little tiny girl, she once saw something nasty in the ocean. Did she now? <laughs> Flora wondered if she'd been wise to come. However, her hand was on the handle of the plough, and she would not turn back. <coughs> because if she did, Mrs. Smiling would make a particular sort of face, which in another and more old-fashioned woman would have meant, I told you so. I say, do you think you mind not talking quite so loudly, please? I'm extremely sleepy. I'd be very grateful if you would. Thank you so much. Because I have in mind all those thousands of persons, not unlike myself, who work in the meaningless bustle of offices, shops and homes. And they're not sure whether a sentence is literature, nor whether a camera shot is worthy of winning the Italia Prize. I have adopted a method perfected by the late Herr Bedecker. And have firmly marked what I consider the finer passages with one, two or three stars. You are now witnessing a two-star passage. Ho! 
The man's big body, etched menacingly against the bleak light that stabbed upon him, did not move. His thought swirled like a beckon spate behind the sodden grey furrows of his face. A woman. A she-woman. She has come to wrest from him the land whose love fermented in his veins like slow yeast. Breaker. Break. Keep and hold. Hold fast the land. Good morning. Good morning, Miss. Where is everybody? Oh, I hear Miss Hilby practicing his preaching. Say, put me up somewhere in my mollikin. Uh, Judy, she'll be upstairs laying out her car. Oh, good. I'll see her later. Mollikin? What's mollikin? Yeah. <laughs> no, don't tell me. I can guess. <laughs> Breakfast has been over an hour or more. <laughs> well, is there some bread and butter and some tea? Hey, you'll, you'll find tea in the jar and the butter in the crockets. You'll have to pen for yourself, Robert Post, child. Um, would you happen to have a piece of clean newspaper I could just put on the corner here to protect me from the... Uh... Oh, Polly, you shouldn't uh, bother with that. It seems to have got tossed about a bit this morning, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, I... You'll have to do so. Uh, I can't be bothered riding over and thither for some flippity gibbet wench. There's a curse on Robert's boat, child. A curse? Oh, is that why everything looks so gone to seed? Well, couldn't you get somebody down from London who knows how to run things? Uh, I've got the neighbours to attend to. The land, thy birthright, the land. The iron furrows of frosted earth under the rain lust. The swelling slow burst of seed sheaths. The slow smell of beasts and cry of beasts. The trampling bull pride of the bull in his hour. She shall not take them from you, never. I'm your cousin, Flora Post. How do you do? Oh, it's nice to have someone come in for some tea. Um, could you take milk? Sugar? No, I don't, but I find that some of my friends do. Scrambler to two hundred furrow come five o'clock down in the boat. Did you? Aye, I did two. Two hundred. Two hundred from Ticklepenny Corner down to Nettle Fletch. Could you have done that? No, indeed. But then you see, I shouldn't want to. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Ah, but you'd pay a hired man good money to do it for you while they wasting the farm's takings. No, I'd I'd let you do it. Blood! It's a mapsy papsy word to use to a man who's nursed a farm like a sick mummet. It's a fine word! Look here, we really must get this. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Your farm! You'll never take don't it. Don't you talk from. to me like that? It's ridiculous, I don't want to Me, won't you help me? Yes, but who are you? I'd be Rennet, I'd be. I'd be own daughter of Micah Susan, the first marriage to Mark. Him be an own half brother to Amos, Micah's cousin, Judith's man. Oh, splendid. I'd be a relation, all right. <laughs> Here. Is thou been served? Sir? Oh, I got up rather late for breakfast, so I don't expect people no, running around all night. I don't mean served. I mean served. Ah! Oh. I mean served. Like them. I 
moment. What? I haven't been put, as yet. That's why they'll torture me. <laughs> Judas! Vines in flower. They'll bring soup bind into the house. They'll make it open its petals. And then they'll do it to me. What? What a warning to you. If thou art as yet untrimmed, there'll be a doing it to it too. So get me to a man. Get me to a man before it's too late. This is like flowers. And their breath is a wine. She took a fancy to young Master Richard. They meet in the woods. Master Richard? Now, who's he? The young squire up at the hall. Oh, of course, the young squire. Who else? If you ask me, you'll be given her the knowledge of all long. Is it right? Oh, having the knowledge? And her only 17 and me not in heaven either as yet? Ash! <laughs> Forgive me. Blessed be thy name. Excuse me. I say, excuse me. But there's a. Oh, I'm Flora Post. Robert Post's child? Yes. Uh, and you are. Amos Starkadder. Oh, Judith's husband. I wedded and bedded her. Oh, how do you do, Cousin Amos? Oh, thank you for having me here. I could do no other. It was me that wronged your father. Oh, yes. What did you do? Nay, nay, nay. Ask me not. Ask me not. My, my, my maker knows. I, 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 I've told him. And then he has uh, dealt with me. I flailed and fustigated, scourged me to my soul's marrow. Ah! I... <laughs> yes. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sure Father wouldn't have wanted that to happen, whatever you'd done to him. Uh, judge not ye the Lord. Sorry. Are you going to preach to the brethren tonight? <laughs> Aye, that I am. They'll all burn in hell. And the Lord has bidden me tell them so. May I come with you, Cousin Amos? Aye, aye, you can come. Oh, thank you. Uh, but maybe you think you can escape hellfire if you come along with me and bow down and quiver, huh? Uh, but I'm telling you, no. No, you've left it too late. Uh, there'll be time to say what, what sins you've done, but... But no time for more. Do I have to say them out loud? Uh, loud and clear for all to hear. Oh, well, in that case, but I'm no, afraid no, I'd not, much rather not... Not tonight. There'll be far too many others tonight, craving to call their sins aloud. Oh, of course. I quite understand. Thank you. Well, I, I mun do what I can for Robert Post's child. So I'll, I'll put in a, a good word for you with, with him. Then it's for him to decide. He, he, he judges, not I. Oh, how good of you. I, but I fear you've left it too late. Uh, you'll burn with the rest. <laughs> Still, I'll drop a word in, in his ear. But more than that, more than that, I cannot do. If Laura intended to tidy up cold comfort, she would find herself opposed at every turn by the influence of Aunt Ada Doom. Storms are what the Aunt Adas of this world enjoy. Doors slam, furious faces, brooding faces, emotional wallowings, misunderstandings, intriguing, spying, interfering, anything but a tidy life. How they do enjoy themselves. 
bit off our food this morning, as you might say. We've only had two goes of porridge, a couple of hard boiled eggs, a kid that's just on the turn. Come in. Cousin Judith, good morning. I'm so sorry to disturb you if you're busy writing letters. I just wanted to know whether you'd like me to amuse myself and make my own arrangements, or should I pop in and see you about this time every morning? Personally, I think it's much easier if a guest wanders round and finds her own ways of passing the time. After all, I'm sure you're very busy. <laughs> busy? <laughs> I'm busy weaving my own shroud, belike. Do as you please, Robert Post's child. Give me time, and I'll atone for the wrong my man did your father. Give us all time, I suppose, and we'll all atone. I suppose you wouldn't care to tell me what the wrong was. I mean, I do think you'd make things a bit easier. My lips are sealed. Just as you like, of course, Cousin Judith. Oh, but there is one thing. My father's left me an allowance of £100 a year. Now, I suggest that if I Keep hand it. over to you the first... Keep it. We won't touch eight near Robert Post's money. While you're here, you're here as the guest of cold comfort. Every minute you eat is paid for by our sweat. And that's as it should be, seeing the way things are. Oh, well, I'll ask Aunt Ada about it. By the way, I adore my bedroom, but do you think I might have my curtains washed? I believe they're red and should so like to make curtains? sure. Curtains? <laughs> child, child. Oh, it is many a long year since such trifles crossed the web of my solitude. Oh, one of the farmhands might do them, perhaps. Mm, it is Miriam's task. We have hired, girl, for hers in labour. That hut, down the far end of Nettleflitch Field, be her breeding box. Always goes to the same place when hers in fast kindle. What? In that grim-looking hut with, without a doctor or anything? Oh, but, I mean, don't you think we'd better fetch one? Yeah, leave her in peace. But, uh... Animals such as Miriam are best left alone at such times. Tent the first she's dropped. Oh, too bad. Oh, it's the fourth. Every year in the fullness of summer when the soup bind hangs heavy from the wains, is the same. Then the spring comes and her hour is upon her again. It's the end of nature. We women can't escape it. Oh, well, can't we? Well, she can't wash the curtains if she's having a baby, can she? Oh, look at him! The shame of our house. Curse be the day I brought him forth and the nourishment he got from my bosom and the wooing tongue God gave him to bring disgrace upon poor, weak women. I don't suppose he plays football anymore. Probably Mollocks instead. Uh, but, Cousin Judith, if you really think she'll be about again in a day or two, I'll just pop down to her hut and make some arrangements about the curtains. Laura had a lively acquaintance with companions through the works of women novelists especially those of the unmarried ones. Why'd you come here mocking me and me shame? You only helped me trouble yesterday night. Yesterday? Brought far for each child I did. Mother's got him now who looks after him. But I mean, all, all that crying out, wasn't that you? Well, me, all right. Only when me trouble come, there were a window and no use me trying to shout above it. So I left me wither into this morning. Well, that's some stark at to know what I've been through. And it's to know what'll happen to me when Soot boys on the edges. And I feel so strange in them long summer evenings. Nothing will happen to you if you just use your intelligence and see that it doesn't. Now, and carefully, me. in huh? full phrases, Miss Laura explained to Miriam how to forestall the effect of too much soup bind and too many long summer evenings upon the female system. And sensing this guileful cousinage of fecundation, for one brief moment the spawning earth twitched, quailed, and was stricken with uterine apprehension. Worm jarred not with worm, nor seed with seed.
beetle and finch fly were not spared. Creatures of wood and field, meadow and hill, the trout sperm of the brook and the burgeoning thorn on the flint fanged crag all seemed to fold inwards upon themselves. And under the ominous bowl of viscous light, their dumbness cried, Flora, meddle not. Life's riddle is not to be challenged. Multiply we must, so that our bodies may return exhausted, hour by hour, minute by minute, to the all-forgiving and all-comprehending slime from which we came. Tis flying in the face of nature. Nonsense. Nature's all very well in her place, but she mustn't be allowed to make things untidy. Tis mother come in. A nasty day, isn't it, miss? Well, ain't you going to ask me how he is? No need to ask. He'll be doing fun. They always does. She want me to wash her curtains. Who's she? The cat's mother. You must excuse her, miss. She's more like her father's side of the family. It was a black day for me when I took up with Agony Beetle and left Sydney, miss. Well, goodbye, Miriam. And remember, no more soup buying. What she told you then? Oh, it's no news to me, Mariam. Though I wasn't quite sure how it was done or how much they caused. Tis wickedness. Just flying in the face of nature. That's right. All the same, it might be worth trying, though. Amos? Huh? It must be so interesting to preach to the brethren, Cousin Amos. I quite envy you. Do you prepare your sermons beforehand, or do you just make it up as you go along? Don't ye speak of the word of the Lord in that godless way. No. The word is not prepared beforehand. It falls on me like manna from heaven into the bellies of the starving Israelites. Oh, really? How interesting. And you've got no idea what you're going to say before you get there? I, I, I always know it'll be something about burning, or eternal torment, or sinners coming to judgment. I don't exactly know what the words will be till I, till I looks around at all their sinful faces. Uh, then I, I, I know what I must say, and I says it. I suppose you must like preaching very much. Aye, uh, that I do. Nay, nay, to the fearful torment. But tis my mission. You know, you ought to preach to a larger congregation than the brethren. Huh? I said you ought to preach to a larger congregation than the brethren. Say you so? I do. I mean, you're wasting yourself on a few miserable sinners round here. You ought to get into a, a Ford van and go touring round the country, preaching on market days. Aye, but that would be exalting myself, uh, puffing myself up, uh, putting my own glory before the glory of the Lord. And would it matter if you do puff yourself up as long as souls are being saved? Nay, nay, nay lass. Puffin be a sin. Ah, but in that case, that means you're setting your own miserable soul before spreading the word of the Lord. Hmm? Aye. Aye, there's, there's truth in what you say. Maybe it is my duty to, to seek a wider field. Aye. Aye, I mun think of it. Of course you mun. I mean, you must. I mean... Wouldn't you like to preach to thousands? Oh, I verily, I, I have the call, and I knows it. Well, then? Uh, but a sinner never knows how the devil's going to dress himself up to deceive. Oh, huh? Huh? Amos! Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how devious are thy ways. Yet if tis thy command, all oh, puffed up. I'll come to thy footstool. That's a boy! <laughs> We're late. Huh? We're late. Nay, hey, lass, I... I times it all precise. It would never do for me to be mixing with them like any simple soul. I be the preacher. I... I don't comes in for this start. Brother Lambo. 
for. He needs equipment. Is that a poker he's conducting with? Why, surely. Just to put his in mind of hellfire and sit you down. <laughs> Miserable crawling worms, are you here again then? Have you come like Nimshi, son of Rehoboam, secretly out of your doomed houses to hear what's coming to you? Have you come young and old, sick and well, matrons and virgins, if there is any virgins amongst you? <laughs> Which I doubt. Have you come to hear me tell of the great crimson licking flames of hellfire? Hmm? I have come. I have come. Dozens of you, like rats, to a granary. And what good will it do you? Hmm? Not! Not! You're all done! never stop to think what that word means when you use it so lightly every day of your wicked lives. Huh? No. No, you don't. Oh, well, I, I'll tell you. It means endless, horrifying torment with your poor sinful bodies stretched out on hot gridirons in the nethermost fiery pit. And demons mocking you and waving cooling jellies in front of you whilst they bind you down tighter and tighter. <laughs> Into your dreadful bed. And the air will be full of the screams of your nearest and dearest, a squealing, a squealing, like slip things, whilst they are slowly roasted to a turn. You know, you know what it feels like when you burn your hand, huh? Aye, uh, when, you, aye, aye. Aye, when you're taking a bit of cake out of the oven. No, we a match when you're lighting one of the godless cigarettes, huh? Aye. Aye, it stings, it stings with fearful pain, huh? Don't it? And then aye. you run away to clop a bit of butter, a bit of butter on it to take aye. away the aye. pain. Aye. <laughs> aye. Ah, but... There will be no butter in hell. No, no. And your whole bodies will be 
burning and stinging with this unbearable pain. And then, then your blackened tongues will be sticking out of your mouth, and your cracked lips will try to scream. No sound. No sound. No sound. The tea shop was a haven where Flora could reflect upon her sworn task of giving order and tidiness to the chaos of cold comfort. Whilst flattering herself that all the Stark Adders could be made civilised given time, she was confronted with a fresh challenge and a personal one in the shape of Mr. Mybug. Hello, Flora Pearce, remember me, Mybug? Did we meet in town? A party given by the pole sleds. Oh. I say, do you believe women have souls? I'm afraid I'm not very interested. Aren't you? A <laughs> good girl. As a matter of fact, I'm not very interested in whether women have souls either. Bodies matter more than souls. May I join you? Do. The Pulsewitz told me you were staying down here. I say, that orange does look good, yes. Think I'll try one too. I simply adore eating things with a spoon. <laughs> I think I'd like to toy with an orange. I'm afraid I have to inform you, sir, that I am closed for the night. I say, it sounds vaguely indelicate, that. Just an orange and some sugar, hmm? With a sinking heart, Flora awaited the opening gambit. It came. Well? You are writing a book, aren't you, about uh, Branwell Bronte? Hmm, as a matter of fact, I am. Yes, yeah, going to be damn good, too. Psychological study, of course. Dug up a whole lot of new material. Came across three letters that Bramwell Bronte wrote to an old aunt in Ireland. A Mrs. Bronte. And the letters were written during a period when Bramwell Bronte was... He's away. Lost in his own brilliance. But it's obvious. No more of that sexy his stuff word, for a bit. Not Emily's. No woman could have written that with that male word. stuff. Males. His sisters hated him. Not devoted to him? Hated him. But uh, they couldn't show it because of their little game. Uh, which little game was that? Passing his manuscripts off as their own, of course. They stole his work and sold it to buy more drink. Who for? Branwell? No, for themselves. His sisters were all drunkards. Charlotte, Emily, Anne was the worst of the lot, of course. Bramwell adored her. He used to pretend to get drunk at the Black Bull in order to get more drinks for her on tick. I, uh, I thought uh, we might... Do some walks together, if you care to. I better warn you, I'm pretty susceptible. Well, if we go walking in this weather, you might catch a cold, and then your book would be held up. Are you with anybody? Yes, my cousin's waiting for me across the street. Oh, dear, I <coughs> thought we might have walked it. It's seven miles, and I'm afraid my boots aren't stout enough. Check to the king. <laughs> well, perhaps we'll meet again. Yes, I'll give you my card. Ah, I'm a queer, moody brute. Nobody likes me. I'm like a child that's been wrapped over the knuckles till it's afraid to shake hands. But there is something there if you care to dig for it. Goodbye. And thank you so much for telling me about your book. It sounds most interesting. I hope you meet again. <coughs> Fornicator! Dash it, Amos, I keep telling you he wasn't a stranger. I met him before in London. Amos, I'm sorry I walked out of your meeting. Well, you should have stayed. I, 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 I was inspired. Mr. Quiverin. Oh, indeed, you were inspired, Amos. Honestly, I found your eloquence almost too overwhelming. You did? I did, really. Uh, maybe. Uh, uh, poor new sheep. Hmm? Uh, uh, well, next time, I'll, I'll, I'll single you out and give you strength. 
Then you'll stay and quiver, quiver with the best. Thank you, Amos. All the same, I hope you'll really see about that Ford van. Oh, Lord, Lord. Tell me if she's the devil sent to tempt me. I said no. Oh, not me, woman. The what? Vernus! Louis, what art thou doing? Why thou hast torn my strap? Thou hast had thy ration this night. Why, and a goodly twer. Tis for Flora. Peace. Tis for her. Hush. Mark ye this woman. If thou proves bothersome, I'll withhold it ye. Oh, no, sir. No. No. Now then, Ivy, creep away. There's a good girl. I shall be send another prayer for you tonight. Thank you, Amos. I'll send it special, and of course it'll be from his chosen servant. So, yes. uh, uh, good night, lass. Uh, good night. Uh, good night. <laughs> Thank Robert you. Brother Post, child. <laughs> Evening, Cousin Flora. How do you do? I feel sure you must be safe. Hi. What's that you're sewing? Flora knew that he hoped it was a pair of knickers. An afternoon tea, Flora. <laughs> Aye, women's nonsense. Women be all alike. Fussing with their foul owls and be dazing a man's eyes. When all they want is a man's blood and his heart out of his body and his soul and his pride. Really? Aye, that's what women want, a man's life. Then when they've got him bound up in their foul owls and be dazing ways, he can't move. Because of the longing for them as cries in his man's blood. Do you know what they do then? I'm afraid not. Would you mind passing me that reel of cotton just by your ear? Thank you very much. They eat him. Same as N spider eats a cock spider. That's what women do if a man lets them. Indeed. Aye, but I said if a man lets them. Now I, I don't let no women eat me. I eat them instead. <laughs> you don't understand half I've been saying, do you, little innocent? I'm afraid I wasn't listening to all of it, but I'm sure it was very interesting. Now, what do you do on the evenings when you're not eating people? I goes into beers on. To play darts? No. I goes to the talkies. The talkies? Do you now? Ah. Uh, not that her knows about it. Aunt Ada? Ah. Uh, keeps to her room, her does. Never comes down, except for the spring counting. Tell me about the talkies, sir. The talkies? Ah. Uh, I likes them better than anything in the world. Better than all this farm, nor my mother, nor Violet at the vicarage. Indeed. That's interesting. Very interesting indeed. I got 75 photographs of Marlene, 45 of Jenny Carroll, 55 of Laura Valet, 15 of Sigrid Maelstrom, and 10 of Penella Baxter. 
sign ones. Ah, oh, I worship some. Would you like to meet them in the flesh? I'd give anything to meet them in the flesh. Excuse me, sir. I am just off to my room to write the most important letter to someone I met quite recently in London. A casting director. Good night, sir. Next day, it was spring. Phoebus lifted his forehead over the flint-fanged crag, life burgeoned, and was quick. The meadow copse, a shameless cooing, went the air, coots cooted, the water oozles oozled, and the pippin piper pipped. Every stone and rock every flowerlet and sprig of moss. Sweet herb and bitter herb, the ram who frolics by day, the stoat who roisters by night, and the ever-nibbling coney who does it any old time, were all bathed and blessed in a rich patina of love. Humankind was not exempt. No sooner had night's goblins hurried to their hidey hoes than dear sweet Elphine, ever sensitive to nature's calls, danced and pranced, as light and as free as the feathery angel puffballs that fly from the golden pisser beds. I can't expect him to produce healthy stock if he's shut up in the smelly dark all day. Someone ought to let that ball out! You went out with the old devil last night, did you? I'm not quite sure what you mean, but if you mean did I go with Cousin Amos, yes, I did. And did the old devil say anything about me? I can't remember. I'm afraid his sermon was so powerful it drove everything else out of my head. Uh. Oh. I advised Cousin Amos to address his sermon to a wider audience. I mean, he ought to go round the country preaching on a lorry. On a lorry? Certainly. Threatening the harmless birds of the bushes more like. Preaching at fairs and on market days. You see, if Cousin Amos were away a good deal, it would mean that someone else would have to take charge of the farm, wouldn't it? Meaning you? I've already told you, Reuben, I'd be no use at all at running a farm. I do think you might believe If you don't mean you, who do you mean? Impossible. The old lady would never let him go. What do you mean? He don't leave. None of us men leave. There have always been I Stark. Know. Stark had as a cold comfort farm, but surely Cousin Amos can decide for himself. Never! He never dare cross into doom. Never. She ain't like other people's grandmothers. She's. Oh, Reuben, do be a lamb and hurry up and tell me. The sun will be gone by the time I'm out on the downs. She's mad. Oh. Mad, 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 mad. she goes. <laughs> Yet another problem in Flora's sworn campaign to tidy up the star cadders. All the same, she wasn't doing too badly. 
Miriam's trouble had been resolved, and her plans for Seth, Amos, and Reuben were well underway. Whom should she tackle next? Mother Ida, it was a deep mid-moon. One silvery cloud had lost his way between the piney sides of this long glen. Then to the bower they came, naked they came. Naked to that smooth, swarded bower. And at their feet the crocus break like fire. Violet, amaranthus and asphodel, lotus and lilies. Nay, lad, nay, put not thy clothes back on. Well, very pretty. Do not be a spoiling of it, I beg ye. Go on with your recipe. Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Don't touch by me, thou captain! Thou art my woman! A head belongs to God! No! Delicious day. Have you been far? Yes. No. No. Oh, way over there. Oh. Oh. oh I can't tell you. I feel. Erfine, are you engaged? There's. Oh, there's someone. It's the young squire, Dick Hawk Monitor, isn't it? We don't want to spoil things by having anything definite and binding. It's, it's horrible to bind people down. Nonsense, it's, it's an extremely good idea. What do you suppose will happen to you if you don't get married? Oh, I shall get a job in an arts and crafts shop in Horsham. And later on, perhaps, I... Oh, I shall go to Italy and learn to be a little like St. Francis of Assisi. Elfine, it's quite unnecessary for a young woman to resemble St. Francis of Assisi. In your case, I think it would be downright suicidal. You see, a large girl like you must wear clothes that fit. Well, now, what is it? Tell me. It's, it's Irk. Irk? He climbs the apple tree outside my bedroom window to watch me going to bed. Does Dick Hawk Monitor know this? Oh, I told him. But what did he say? He said, rotten luck, old girl. Oh, bad. Very bad. 
I suppose you do care enough for him, my dear, to wish to become his wife. It's his, his 21st birthday at the end of April. There's to be a dance for him at the assembly rooms, only... Only I can't go. Grandmother doesn't allow stock adders to accept invitations unless to funerals or the churching of women. A dance? Listen, Elfine, I think it would be an excellent thing if you went. I'll try and see if I can arrange it. Oh, well, it may be difficult for us to procure some invitations. But I think my cousin Charles can help us there. We'll take you up to town. We're going to get you a brand new frock. We're going to get that hair done. My dear, you simply won't know yourself. You're going to be a changed woman. It's my hour. And when more waterfalls mate under the May trees this summer, that will make her mine. They that child were born. Aunt Ada said to me, Irk, put the cross and water of old's blood on her feeding bottle to mark her for thee. Put the cross I did. Every year since then on thy birthday, I took ye up to Tickle Penny Corner and I, and told ye the one word. God help him, murderer, as tries to take her from me. Me and the water vows will get her back. Or I send out! Been here a month, and I haven't seen her. Thinks it's strange, does she? Dropped hints, has she? How dare she break in? on my solitude. How dare she? Nothing must happen. Nothing must change. No one must leave the farm. Why should I fear her? The whole family knows her when I was a tiny little girl. So small that the lightest puff of breeze would blow my little crinoline skirt right over my head. I saw something nice in the woodshed. Never forgotten it, I haven't. Remembered it all my life, that nasty thing. Even now, I can't see a bicycle past the window, but I get a sick in my stomach. <laughs> Outside in the world, horrid things, nasty things happen, but not here. So I am staying here. Ruling the roost, having five not meals you, a day brought up to you, as regular as clockwork. So, all things considered, it hasn't been such a bad break for you that day you saw something nasty in the woodshed. I can't say I like him much myself, but you must have a partner, you know. Cousin! Yes? I'd like a word in private! Certainly, Reuben. Elfine. If it's about big business, I'm no, not no, to discuss no. it. No, no, it's not that, no. I've been thinking about your words, Flora. I, I, I've been pondering them over. I've been pondering them over. Now tell me. Have I got it right? We aim to encourage the old devil. Cousin Amos. Aye. We, we, we aim to encourage him to go off. And I'll, I'll run the farm while he's away. He'll see us how I can do it. And maybe leave it for my own. Exactly. Dang me if I don't get into the old devil how he must be speechifying this week. Victory was hers. What is more, this was the first sign of humanity she'd encountered among the Stark Adders, and she was moved by it. Yahoo! Exhilarating, isn't it, Flora? 
The womb of the earth is germinating. It's like trampling on the body of a great brown woman. I feel I'm a partner in some mighty rite of gestation. Two or three times in the weeks that followed, Flora went walks with my bug. He was not interested in anything but sex. She found this understandable, if deplorable. After all, many of our best minds had the same weakness. God, those buds, they've such a phallic, urgent look, don't you think? My bug put down her lack of enthusiasm to inhibitions. Curious how most English women of 19 to 24 are inhibited. Cold! That's what English women of 19 to 24 are. Cold. Nipples and virgin. Look, Flora, doesn't that little pool look just like an navel? Do you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to take off all my clothes and jump into it. It's so natural and real for What is reality? Have we the strength to confront it? Only madmen and saints dare penetrate the looking-glass worlds. Reality is mankind's alien mirror. Flora's favourite writer, the Abbé fosse Merg, without actually laying down rules of conduct, outlined a philosophy for the civilised being, a guide to dignified life. Can we ever be sure that an elephant's real name is Elephant? Only mankind presumes to name God's creatures. God himself is silent upon the matter. How true. <laughs> I take him. Post arrived yet? He's got it. Urk. Hmm? Urk? Turns you up, don't it? Seen today's dinner? Hanging round somebody's neck like that? Tomorrow's too, for all I know, and the day after's. The orc monitor coat of arms. Desert from the orc. I'll not run, run me and my elfie. My letters, please. Thank you. Uh, and the other one. Come along. There's red from the hall. Who's red to you? Mary, Queen of Scots. Thanks. Smart, aren't you? Well, I tell you, it's mine! Mine! <laughs> Dick, oh, monitor, what's he? Squire, never, scrawny tit of a boy. Playing at horses in his red coat just like his daddy afore him. Lead to what I say. There's mine! It's above me, are you? A man likes his beast to be a bit dainty. Me and the water voles will get her back again. Are those water voles around your neck? How interesting. I've never seen one before. Where the water voles can wait! Well, there's a nasty Ted before you. Is that Aunt Ada's tray? Here, use your grub. Here, she can't half chuck. I'll give her that. Just a sec. I think I'd like to deliver it. You? was rooted out of her lock, stock and ballad. She was to be seen at the Wigmore Hall. The Vic Wells. And a Fargin review. Adam and Eve, they had no cake. Ellie, she, she met a dirty snake. They didn't know what was right or wrong, till the snake, he sang her a dirty song. 
Returning home, she learned to be serious about horses. And never to go on long walks unless accompanied by a dog. Thus, her education was fulfilled. I met a sweet young maid. I said to her, come walk with me through the forest glade. Oh, what shall we do when we get there? Please tell me I must know. We'll sit beneath the sacred tree and watch the armies grow. Fetch me my stays. I can see why man go downstairs. I man feel you all about me. All of you. Micah, Erkel, Ezra, Calvey, Markway, Amos, Rubin, Sefer. I and Mark and Luke, none of you man ever leave me. Once when you were a little girl, you had seen something nasty in the woodshed. Now you are old. You must suffer indignities. You are old. You hadn't worn your elastic-sided boots, not since the day you buried Fig. Fig, your husband. What was he to you? A prickly beard, a smell of flannel, a fumbling, an urgent voice in the larder. These boots smell nasty. Lavender water, Judith. Souse them with lavender water, inside and out. Extremely beautiful. Mind you behave yourself properly. There's a big car drawn up. That'll be Charles. Is Irk anywhere about? No, I left him on the hill with the water boats. Oh, he's safe for half an hour. Elfine, not a sound. the farmhouse stared dead and glazed as fish's eyes, reflecting the dim and pallid blue of the fading west. The alembic of night sky distilled a darkness which seeped through stone and jutty ledge, mullion and scullion, indeed the whole fabric of cold comfort farm. The livid silver tongues of the early stars leaped twixt the shapes of chimney pots and shimmered like idiot children dancing to long forgotten tunes. In upper room, an all unmoving shadow cast itself dumbly across the shrouded window panes, the light waxing and waning as doth the faltering lion head of dying beast. The house itself, at witching time of this May Eve, thrust deeper roots into the yard. No sound broke its quiescence. Only the light from upper room burnt waveringly on, naked and innocent in ever deepening tenebrae. Miss Flora Post, Mr. Charles Fairford, Miss Elphine and Mr. Seth Arak Ada. Excuse me, Pamela. 
my Elfie. I'm unworthy of you. You are enjoying yourself, aren't you, Florence Nightingale? <laughs> to see you all here tonight, and I, well, I'm awfully glad you could all come. Oh, we can do that all right. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I shall always be glad to remember that you were all able to be here on my 21st birthday. Um, it, it, it makes it all the more jollier somehow. I mean, I, well, I, I do like to have a cheery mob round me, what? What? Get on with it. Yes. Um, well, it, it, it's a jolly evening, well, a particularly jolly evening. Uh, I mean, jo jolly for me, that is, because I've got something to tell you that I know you're all going to think quite frightfully spittingly jolly. Miss Starkadder and I are engaged. <laughs> Starkadder? Who is it? Oh, yes, Starkadder! Oh, jolly good seat to that, too. <laughs> Me to her chamber. She hardly closed the door. Where? Quiet, Adam. <laughs> Mother, uh, your family is assembled. All of them. All? Where is Flora Post? Good night, Charles. <laughs> Hey, it looks as though folks are still up. It's her, all right. <laughs> she molded an accountant. <laughs> well, brace up, Elphine. We are, I'm afraid, for it.
time, we've enjoyed ourselves no end. Is that big business I see there in the corner? <laughs> How do you do, Aunt Ada? I saw something nasty in the woodshed. The woodshed? The woodshed is terrible, Bradley. There's one of our bad nights, Flora. Mother, don't you know the me? Woodshed. It's Judy. I've got Flora Post to Nave. see you. Robert Post, child. I saw something nasty in the woodshed. It was, it was a burning noonday, 69 years ago, and me, no bigger than a titty rank. I saw something nasty. Look at her. Firm skin, clear eyes, tight little mouth, and close grip. If Aunt Ada was mad, Flora was one of the Marx brothers. I saw something nasty. Nasty! 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 Oh, 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 help me! Help me! Help me to my chair! Help me! Oh. You're all wicked and cruel. You want to go away and leave me in the woodshed. But you, you never will. Not one of you. Never. There's always been stark adders, a cold comfort. And you, all of us, all of you, stay here with me. With me. Amos, Judith, Michael, Luke, Eric, Luke, Mark, Reuben, Rene, Elphine, Elphine. Seth! Ah, oh, Seth. My little darling. Come. Come here. Come to me, Seth. Here I be, Grandma. I'll never leave you, never. Ooh. There's my good boy. My moment. My puppet. <laughs> Why, how grand he is tonight. What's this? What's all this? What have you been doing, boy? Tell you, Granny. Uh, I, I... Tell me! He's been to Richard Hawke Monitor's 21st uh, birthday oh. dance. So have I, so has Elphine. And what's more, Aunt Ada, Elphine and Richard Hawke Monitor are engaged to be married. <laughs> and they will be married in one month from now. <laughs> My little waterfall! I can't bear it! Oh, I can't bear it! I can't bear it! I can't bear it! I well. I was only waiting for the eggplant to bloom and I would a lady down and made him mine! I've lost it! Me! Would put a mark on your feet in bottle and waterfall's blood! Gone from me, thou ass! Oh, oh, oh. Nay, you're right. Don't take on so there. Who speaks? Why, oh, it is Miriam. Thou'd give me solace, wouldst thou, Miriam? Oh, no, you don't. Ah. Dirt as you are, I'll take you and we'll sink in the muck together. Who's talking to hell? A pity you don't spend a bit less time with your water bowls and a bit more with your soap and flannel. Oh, I don't know in a better, mother. Don't you have him, ducky, let you feel like it. I love him, mother. You will him. <laughs> I saw something nasty in the woodshed. Something nasty. I shall go now. I shall go. Carry me on that way. Ah, oh, carry thee. Tis a show of manhood. I will carry thee, wench. Nasty <laughs> <laughs> budge, will you? <laughs> Cut to your throat. <laughs> I'm not beaten yet. I'm not beaten yet. On my feet, woman. Here. Try the fireman's lift. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Try the fireman's lift. Stand back, everybody. Stand still, you talk.
Can you hear me? Ah. Uh, and then in aid, Judith, it's uh, it's mother, it's mother. I'm on speak with. You see, uh, the uh, the Lord, the Lord has called me, mother, and I uh, I am on go. Go? Man, go. Aye. Husband, did you say go? Aye. 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 It's terrible, terrible. They have to go, Judith. But uh, I, 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 I must do what the Lord says. Oh, well, no, I cannot bear it. No, 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 I mother. cannot bear it. Mother, mother. mother I, I, I've been praying and wrestling, and, and I know the truth at last. I must go and preach the word of the Lord among the heathen. Never. <laughs> I shall go mad, no. You mongo. None of you go. You must. You must. You see, Mother, I, I, I must get one of the Ford vans and then go abroad preaching, 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 Mother. I saw something nasty in the woods, said something nasty. You mustn't go. I forbid you to go. I forbid you to go. I saw something nasty. Very night, I must go this very night. I, I hear, I hear the glad voices of the angels calling me. Eh? Eh? Do you hear them? And besides, uh, they're arranged with agony beetle to pick me up in the, on the London milk van, so there's no time to lose. No! I'm hey, Moss, no! Don't leave me! Goodbye, goodbye, Judith. It's, it's goodbye to everybody, everybody. And goodbye, Mother. Now, I've broken your chain at last. With the help of the Lord and all his angels. Now, where, 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 where's my hat? Well, oh, thank you, Reuben. Uh, 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 I, you go, leave me alone in the woodshed. There's always been stark adders, cold comfort. That means nothing to you. I shall go mad, and I shall die alone here in the woodshed with nasty things sitting <laughs> Pestering me, I, oh, I shall lose mad. I shall go mad. Oh. Hey, Mars! Hey, mother! Oh. Help me, angels! Help me! Thank you, Angels. I, I'm all right now. Why? Oh, I'm fine now. Uh, I'm coming, Lord. I'm coming. Hey, my oh, God! No, he's gone! <laughs> my cork and stay in my stag and ball and ram, he's gone from me. There's always been stark at us at all comfort. Always been. Listen, Lord. Cousin Flora, it's time you were in bed. Don't forget what he did for me. You got rid of the old devil for me. The farm's mine now, surely. Mm, such fun for you. Oh, would you just excuse me while I just... It was a great day for Cold Comfort Farm when he came here. Who's took him away from me? Who's took him away? That shit, that brat, Robert Post's child. Ah, speak not so hard. 
harsh, Grandmother. Harsh! I be alone in the woodshed now. <laughs> He's gone. My man, my Amos, gone from me. The woodshed. Trapped. Locked in. Oh, no escape. My medium's better class than him anyway. Why, the stench of him. And I'm sure he's full of lights. Why, my agony will create something shocking when I finish getting it. There were you, Reuben. You took on your from your father. In what planted thee? Shame on thee. The next day was Sunday, so thank goodness everybody could stay in bed and get over the night before. At least, that's what most families would have done. But the Starcadders were not like most families. By seven o'clock, most of them were up and doing. For life burned in them with a fiercer edge. My master of the farm. My master of the farm. And the slow tide of satisfied earth lust indolently ebbed and flowed in his veins. Earth lust and belly lust of the teeming spring countryside mocked at a mother's leaden eyes. And a poor sad virgin huddled by the fireside and stirred jam. Still bewildered by the fact of Elphine's betrothal, the sound of old wedding bells dance between tufts of hair in Adam's withered ears and catches of country rhymes sung before George IV was born return to him as memories. Powerless waves of fury coursed through an inert ruin of flesh. Sometimes names burst out of her green lips. Help him. Erk! Sometimes they just stayed inside. No one had seen anything of Erk since he'd gone galloping out into the night carrying Miriam, the hired girl. It was generally assumed he drowned her and then himself. Who cared anyway? At half past three in the afternoon, Flora was still asleep. Miss Flora! Have you got them there? Oh, miss, one of them sat Mr. My bag, oh. And the other's a gentleman who says his name's Nick. Yeah. Nick. No. Nick! 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 Help me, Nick! Help me, Nick. What, where is he? There. Uh, what, oh, right. oh, get him some tea, Dilly. Yes, yeah. at once. Yes, and Seth, find Seth. Seth? Yes, quick! Yes. Seth! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gee, baby, it's good to see you. Honey budget is. I mean that sincerely. So you got my letter? Sure I did, sure. Only I was over in Manhattan at the time, buying up a Broadway show or two. You're over here looking for English film stars, are you, Mr. Nick? That's right, Sonny Roar and Gusty. Do you know the work of the Sunday Repertory Film Club people at all? Uh, mm. I want a big stiff that smells of the great outdoors with a golden voice. I want... I want passion. I want raw blood. Okay. I, oh, thank you. Do you know the work of Lymph? Never heard of him. Ever seen Alexander Finn? I saw him in Pepin's last film, you know. They all wore glass clothes, you know. Moved in time to a metronome. Yeah. Thank you, sweetheart. You know, Mr. Bugmire, uh, we got a responsibility to the public. Really? We got to give them what they want. Only it's got to be clean. Now, boy, that's difficult. I want a man that can give it to him sexy and porny. Only it's got to be sort of nice, so it don't leave a bad taste in the mouth, right? Right. Yeah, well, who have I got? I got Tex Jones. Yeah, well, he's a good kid. Can ride a horse, but he's got no body urge. Body urge? Body urge he ain't got. Body got Valentine Orlo. He looks like a wop. Great American public won't take wops no more. Not after poor old Morelli went to the chair, that is. No, wops is deep for nightly off. Oh, dear, you must have such a hard life, Mr. Nick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, wops is off. Highborn sissies is off. Nice eggs next doors is off. Harmonica playing cowboys is hellish off. Downtrodden freedom loving tramps is off. Even dear old Irish lovers of their mothers is off. Yeah, I know what the public's aching, longing, yearning for. I just can't find it.
They shan't have him. He's mine. Mine. Oh, this is my cousin, Seth Starkadder. He's uh, very interested in the talkies. Mr. Neck is a producer, Seth. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Neck. He's got the voice. Well, well, how's the boy? Eh? You are a fan, are you? Hey, you and me's got to get acquainted. Hey, you ain't signed, are you? Don't kid me. Kid you? I mean it, boy. Son, you want to go into talkies? More than anything in the world. Well, ain't that dandy? He wants to be a movie star, and I want to make him one. Hold it. Hey, look at that. Look at the profile. Hey, what are you standing there for, boy? Go get your overnight bag. We catch the first plane to L.A. Whoa! <laughs> but that's Hollywood! Yeah, that's Hollywood! Come on, Seth. Pack your bags for the journey. You're going to kill him, boy. You're going to slaughter him. Mr. Where, Neck. Where's the rat? If his grandma hears you, she won't let him go. Hey, give me the rats, huh? She'll give you the rats. <laughs> with him, I'm around. Ask. <laughs> Bye, sir. Ah, well, it was what he wanted. Already he's as unreal as Achilles. Rennet Starkadder. She's had a pretty septic time on the whole. What a wonderful face. She's a brittle, hair-like quality. Don't you feel it? An untamed look, you see, sometimes in newly born leverets. I wish Kapotkin could see her. He'd want to do her in plaster. I say, will you come for a walk with me? What, now? Why not? I'll have to ask permission. We're friends, aren't we? <laughs> Certainly. We might dine together in town sometime. That'd be delightful. There's a quality in you, Flora. Remote and limp like Oddly unawakened. I'd like to write a novel about you and call it virginal. Do, if it passes the time for you. Oh, excuse me, you two. Really? Sir. How far would you care to walk? Hmm? How far? Mm -hmm. How far would you care to take me, Mr. Wayback? 
The sun's rays fell into the room where Judith lay on her bed in silence and were withered. The sordid flies, intent on their own selfish pleasure, buzzed in idiotic circles above her head. Their sound drew a web of scarlet pain into her withdrawn darkness. Already, on her shrine of veneration, Seth's likeness had been veiled. They were not eyes, but roids, sunk between two jutting penthouses of bone and two bloodless hummocks of cheek. They suspended two raw rods of anguish before their own immobility, and on these rods the fluttering rags of a futile grief were hung. Cousin Judith. A dead woman. A lifeless hulk. Cousin Judith, I think you need a change a waste. of atmosphere. Use rind, a shell. I'm going up to town tomorrow. What use? Oh, wouldn't gone? you care to come with me? I hope to lunch with the most charming Austrian doctor. Oh, leave the farm. Others have managed it. Elphine's gone too. She's staying up at the hall till her wedding. My son. My man child, my Seth. And the life sap flows from me. I needs must wither now. Well, never you mind that now. Just you make up your mind to be ready by nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Nine o'clock! Do you like music? Gardening? Do you play chess? Couldn't you give my cousin some advice? Oh, uh, the job of the... Psychiatrist is to prompt the conversation and then to think about it. That is all. However, I see no harm in cutting across my professional norms. Would you like to hear my assessment of your case, dear lady? Of course she would. Uh, mere jottings. I find that her parental maladjusted uterus seeking woodshed ambiance posits a claustrophobic deprivation where she is forced to vacillate between the archetypal witch woman and the venerated virgin, sexually deprived. With an Andromache incest tension towards her youngest son, she sublimates it into an overdevelopment of the olfactory nerve endings and taking on the Diana situation. Goes out hunting with this aphrodisiacal herb or plant. Ah, the souk vine. Yeah, souk vine. Did you understand all that, Cousin Judith? It means that this dear sweet lady is completely normal. Normal? So typical of a good mother of an English family, it is simply unbelievable. Now, dear lady, I give you some words. I want you to tell me immediately what comes into your mind when I say a word. Do you follow? Oh, I think so. Black. Blue. Ah, you thought of white, didn't you, Flora? Yes. That was simply a dummy run, dear lady. Here comes a real test. Are you ready? Right. Good. Oh. Frost. Whip. Cream. Throttle. You have something to do with a car, isn't it? You see. Wonderful. Wonderful. Come with me. Come to my nursing home. Or they we will frolic with your anima. And wander through the wards hand in hand, so blissfully archetypal together. And at night in our dreams have surrealistic encounters. And then as dawn breaks, we will create fresh myths that will haunt mankind for a thousand, thousand years. Dear lady, will you come with me? Are you sure you want to go? There's a dark force in him. It beats like a gong. I wonder you don't feel it. Dear oh well, lady. we can't all strike lucky. Dear lady, come with me. Uh, shall I send anything on to you, Cousin Judith? Five red shawls and the airpins. Your office is uh, dark. There's the munch pink. 
She wants a slice of arm cake with butter on for her tea. I won't be a jig. Up and down all day. Got married for a month or more. Her husband was away. Afternoon, cousin Flora. Hello, Reuben. Where did you get the money to buy all those lovely grinders? My dear, I think you're masterly, quite masterly. If you carry on as you began, you'll make the farm too prosperous. Ah, that's if the old devil don't change his mind and come back. <laughs> I shouldn't think he will. Just you listen to this. Praise the Lord. I go to spread the Lord's word amongst the heathen Americans with the Reverend Elderberry Shift Glass of Chicago. Uh, tell Reuben he can have the old place. So, praise the Lord, and, and be sure and send clean socks. Uh, love to all, Amos Stark Ida. I shouldn't worry if I were you. I'm sure he means it. Mm. I don't suppose he'd marry me, would he, Cousin Flora? Oh, Reuben, that is nice of you. But I'm afraid it would never do, you know. No? Well, I'm afraid I'm not at all the kind of person who'd make a good wife for a farmer. Well, I like your pretty ways. That's charming of you. I like yours, too. But honestly, it wouldn't do. I think that, um... Well, somebody like Mark Dola's Nancy would be much nicer for you. And more useful, too. Well, she's not 15 yet. All the better. In three years' time, the farm will be doing really well, and you'll have a really nice home to offer her. Ah. Maybe that's best. Mark Dola's Nancy, then. Well, I might be getting back to the cow shed. Oh, Reuben. Reuben, I need some money to buy um, decorations for Elphine's wedding reception and the feast. Ah, the farm shall not disgrace us. No. I'll give you 30 pounds. We'll do our damnedest. Uh, uh, what about the old one? Leave her to me. Well, thank you so much for this money, my lamb. Oh, Reuben, need we have all this smelly soup bind about? I'm so afraid it'll be bad for the girls. Well, you do as you please, Cousin Flora. I never want to see another sprig of it again. Right. Well, this won't bother the baby in you, babe. I will take that. What's that? I'll take this farm cake. I'd like to deliver it to a... Uh, yes. Hotel Millimar. Yeah, Ritz. Uh, ne Negresco. Nice. Colton. Can. And the Metropole at Monte Carlo. Best of luck to you, miss. Well, if I'm not down by three o'clock, would you kindly send up some tea with yes. lemonade? Yes. Uh, if I'm not down by half past four, we'll have tea with currant cake. Yes. Oh, and if I'm not down by seven, please send up a tray with supper for two. Oh. And we'll have milk and biscuits at ten. Oh, oh Mrs. Beetle. The souk bind. Thank you. Well, I'll never. Oh. Surely it's time you were in bed. Ooh. Can I have that milk now, Mrs. Beaver? Oh, 
directly, Miss directly. Oh, don't bother about Aunt Ada. I put her to bed. She's asleep. Oh, oh, we oh, oh, was feared for eating. How many times we near come up again? Oh, very kind of you. But it's quite all right, really. Everything's settled now. I don't suppose he'd tell us how he did it. Oh, I couldn't tell you now. Oh, it would really spoil things. No, you'll just have to wait until the wedding day. It's going to be a marvellous surprise. Wonderful. First drop, Yeah, Great lush. Like a dear little child. Pause off, Pompey. Oh. The milk! Oh, Adam, how sweet of you. Isn't it sweet of him, Richard, darling? Rather. I'll keep it in my bosom. It'll make you bear fortune, eh? Uh, and now, lad, if I'll be man enough to pleasure her for life long, <laughs> take to thy bright bed this spring of... Uh, quite, thank you, Adam. Shall we proceed to the wedding breakfast? On you go, my darling. So... Here you all are. Welcome to Cool Comfort Farm. It's our Jada! Our Jada Cruz! You're flying in the face of me! And her eyes are eating! Awfully posh and tiddly, don't you think? Tis the older son! Tis enough to kill her! Oh, well, I never! <laughs> Dear me, how, how magnificent! Uh, how do you do, Miss Doom? Oh, 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 oh. Well, so good nice. people, this is all very flattering. But if I'm to see anything of my granddaughter and the rest of you, we must hurry up and start the wedding breakfast. <laughs> I have to be on the continent in less than half an hour. Do you not be down with the warming pan? From the flower to the fruit, by their grocery you know. Oh, that I should live to see this day. Darling, you look so <laughs> Bless you both. I hope you'll both be very happy. <laughs> we will. for our Vader! Sheer barbarism. What do we mean? Well, I mean, you take the wedding cake, for example, the round cake, ceremoniously cut with a knife. Clearly a symbolic, phallic announcement of a very phallic intention. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Let me thank you for the hundredth time, my dear, for all you've done. <laughs> 
Paris, how luxurious. <laughs> and I will remember to preserve my personality as you advise. <laughs> and you will not find me plucking my eyebrows, nor doting on a boy of 25. <laughs> I really am tremendously grateful to you, my dear, my little pippet. Aunt Ada, there's something you can do for me, too, if you will. Tell me, what was the wrong that Amos did my father, Robert Post? Oh, you want to know that, do you? And did the goat die? <laughs> grandmother, yes, grandmother, Adam wants to come and live at the hall with us and look after oh. our cows. May he? He's an absolutely <laughs> splendid fellow and we'd absolutely right. love him. Too. By all means, my dear, but who will care for Texas? Graceless. Pointless and aimless if he deserts them. Desert him? What me, Mum? Oh, don't say that. I never desert him. I'm taking him along with me, all four of them. There is room up at the old forest. Isn't there? Yes, of course. Uh, see, I must, I must go and tell him. I must go and tell him and get him ready for the journey. Uh, uh, What's the matter, Elf? Who should have the first slice? First slice? Uh, oh, um, ladies and gentlemen, I vote that it should be Aunt Ada. <laughs> Well, not if you want me with you. Well, could you be an absolute angel and come and fetch me away from the farm? You mean, collect you in Speed Cop 2? That's right. Hello, Charles? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> we had the wedding today. Uh-huh. And I've tidied everybody up now, and... Well, uh, there seems nothing left for me to do. What time do you want me there? Let's see, it's now five. Can you make it six? Uh, make it 6.30. Charles? Uh-huh. It's not uh, putting you out or anything. <laughs> On her return, the farm was deserted. All signs of the feast had been cleared away by Mrs. Beetle, who had then gone home. Thank you. 
I can't believe it's true. It is true, isn't it? Say I love you. I love you. I'm glad I'm being born. Say it again. I love you.